Hi, I'm Nick and welcome to the Rig and Farm YouTube channel. We recently posted a video about our brand new shed that we got from Costco. Definitely check out that video first if you haven't already. We've made a couple improvements to this shed over the last week. The first thing you might notice is the ramp that I'm standing on. This ramp is going to make it extremely easy for us to use a hand truck to get our freezer from the shed onto the trailer and to the farmer's market. And speaking of the freezers, the most important thing we did was run electricity to the shed. We'll go ahead and show you exactly what we did right now. The breaker panel is on the opposite side of the house, so the first thing we did was dig a trench for the half inch diameter conduit that would house the wire that's run through the crawl space. This trenching shovel allowed us to dig a narrow ditch from the stucco wall to the ground under the shed. Once we got to an adequate depth, a path under the wall had to be made. That's when we used our drill with a one inch auger to cut through the clay soil. Then I had to army crawl under our home with a headlamp to get a hole started on the other side. Let there be light! Ashley was on the other side to make sure the conduit would fit. Look! Trash left under our house from the Clayton Homes team! Ashley's dad did most of the work with this project and actually taught us quite a lot. He drilled a hole in the floor of the shed for the conduit. A piece of vertical pipe easily went through. Next he used PVC primer and glue to permanently attach this 90 degree sweep on the bottom portion of the pipe. Now to stick in a piece that's long enough to connect to the sweep and get all the way under the house. More PVC primer and glue were used. By the way, don't do what we did. After doing a dry fit, run the wire through the individual pieces before reconnecting and gluing them. More on that soon. Hey, Ellen. Now to open up the breaker panel. We needed to run more conduit from the panel and under the house, but first a perforated opening had to be punched out. We opted to drill through the stucco on this side. Another sweep was added along with a straight pipe. Back under the house I went to feed the wire through the conduit. That was when we realized that this thick 12 gauge 2 conductor wire would get caught at every connection and was pretty much impossible to feed all the way through. Luckily the glue hadn't set all the way and was able to come apart to get the wire through each individual piece of conduit. With the breaker turned off, the black wire, which is the hot wire, was attached and held in with a screw. The copper ground wire was attached with the other ground wires in the panel, and so was the white neutral wire. Meanwhile, I did another army crawl to run the wire from one side of the house to the other. What's this? Nice! A black widow! Here's a little toad, and two more black widow nests. We ran into the same issue feeding the wire, but the glue was already set. We cut the pipe, ran some 14 gauge wire down through the sweep, spliced the two together, and pulled all the wire through before taping the two sections of conduit together. We used some roofing caulk that was left over from our wind turbine installation on our shipping container to seal the holes that we made. I backfilled the trench while Ashley's dad got started with the wiring on the inside. Holes were drilled through the 2x4 framing to run the wire. Outlet boxes were attached to house the electrical outlets. The wire was cut, stripped, and pulled through to connect the power outlet along with another section of wire that was run to the next outlet box. It's very important to look at the outlet to determine which side gets the hot wire coming in versus going to the next outlet as well as which side gets the neutral wires. There's also a small screw at the bottom for the ground wire. Once everything is connected, it's time to secure the outlet and then install a cover plate. Now let's flip the breaker into the on position to see if we have power. Yep, we have power! I wasn't available during the installation of the 8 foot LED light, so that didn't get filmed. Sorry about that. The wiring goes from the strip light and down to the light switch that was installed next to the door of the shed. That leads to the first outlet that will be used for our freezers, then the GFCI outlet for power tools, and that goes along the back wall to the other side that powers an additional outlet that's going to be used for a refrigerator. Thank you so much for watching the video. We hope you learned something. We're going to go ahead and put links down in the description below to show you everything that we use for these builds.
Feel free to comment below if you have any questions. We always do our very best to respond to everybody. Make sure you subscribe to our channel if you don't already, because we're always doing lots of really cool projects here on Rig and Farm. We'll see you next time.